Okay, so we're going to have a look at a fun little number theory problem here, which is basically just asking you for which positive integers m and n is this expression prime. If you'd like to have a go at this by yourself, do pause the video now, otherwise I'll dive straight into my solution. So there's a few different ways you could approach this, even using Galois theory if you want to do something really advanced. The solution I'll share is hopefully the most sort of straightforward one, doesn't require any particularly advanced tools. So the idea of how I would go about answering this is basically you've got a high degree polynomial divided by a lower degree polynomial and then hopefully we can sort of tidy this up, turn it into something that perhaps isn't even a fraction and then what we'll do from there is we'll try and factorise this which would show that other than perhaps for a few very special values of m and n this expression can be factorised into two integers so it couldn't be prime other than for those special values. So to make a start towards tidying up the fraction you might spot that this m squared and this m to the 6 you're basically your top term is m squared to the power of 3, and this term, 27n to the 6, is 3n squared, all cubed. So if we introduce, just to make this a little bit easier to follow, we'll say that a is equal to m squared, and we'll define b as 3n squared. Then this means that our original expression then, m to the 6 plus 27n squared, all divided by m squared plus 3n squared. If we write this in terms of a and b, this is the really nice a cubed plus b cubed, all divided by a plus b. And this just makes it a little bit easier to follow because at this point you can perhaps see that a cubed plus b cubed, a plus b is actually going to be a factor of this cubic because if you substitute in a equals minus b, a cubed plus b cubed is going to be equal to zero. So by the factor theorem, this means that a plus b is going to be a factor. So this is particularly nice because then we can do this division and then there won't even be a nasty remainder there to deal with. So what are we going to get when we do the division? Well, you could do this sort of methodically using polynomial long division, if you like, or for something where there's quite a nice bit of symmetry here, you could perhaps look at this and think, oh, well, a, what do we need to multiply by to get a cubed? We've got a squared, and we're going to need a b squared as well, so that b times that b squared gets us our b cubed. Then we need to think what terms have we got that we don't want. We've got b times a squared and you've got an a b squared here, which you don't want. So in order to get those to cancel, you can introduce a minus a b here. So then you get a minus a b squared, which cancels with your other positive a b squared. You could do this more sort of methodically if you prefer with polynomial long division. But the sort of upshot here is that basically when we do this division, a cubed plus b cubed divided by a plus b, this is the term we're going to get in the end, which is no longer a fraction, which is particularly nice. And then let me rewrite this in terms of m and n. And this gives us, because a is equal to m squared, you get now a quartic expression in m and n, m to the 4 minus 3m squared n squared, and then plus 9m to the power of 4. So there you go, we've taken our original expression and we've done the division and now we've got it as a nice quartic. So the next thing we'll have a look at doing is trying to factorise this quartic. But it's not particularly obvious how you would actually go about factorising this quartic and if you check it turns out there aren't going to be any nice linear factors to take out. But I'll show you just quite a nice sort of satisfying way of getting this to factorise now. And this sort of relies on, remember that 9 times n to the 4, this is basically 3 n squared, all squared, and then m to the power of 4, this is m squared, all squared. And then I'm thinking here we've got something squared plus something else squared, so if you've got like a squared plus b squared, at this point you could take a squared plus b squared, and you could write this as a plus b, all squared, minus 2ab. So we'll have a go at this and just see what it gives us. So basically what I'm suggesting here is you have m squared plus 3n squared all squared. And then you get the nice sort of m to the 4 and the 9n to the 4 terms coming out. But then you've also got an extra term that you don't particularly want. You've got a 6m squared n squared. So you've got to remove that. So it's kind of like doing completing the square, but not quite the same procedure. And then we've also, we still need this minus 3 m squared, n squared term to take away here. So let me just group this together then. So you've got your m squared plus 3n squared all squared. 
it seems like, oh, this isn't quite going to cancel out nicely. But if you notice here, you've got minus 9m squared n squared. And then because 9 is a square number, I'm going to do something very special now and write this as 3mn all squared. And at this point, we've basically solved the problem. You've got it as the difference of two squares of two different things. So here you've got m squared plus 3n squared. You've got 3mn. So now if we write this as the difference of two squares, we've basically factorised our original expression. And then it's just a simple matter of seeing for which values of m and n does this factorisation give you two distinct sort of factors. So let's write this out. You get m squared plus 3n squared plus 3mn, and then multiplied by m squared plus 3n squared minus 3mn. So this is just quite a fiddly difference of two squares here. You've got your 3mn's there, and you've got your m squared plus 3n squared terms there. So now we've got this in the difference of two squared forms. It's just a matter of checking. Basically, if this was equal to 1, for example, then this could the original expression could still be a prime number. If this bracket was equal to 1, then it could still be a prime number. But if neither of these are equal to 1, then it's going to have at least two distinct factors. So we'll deal with this in a sec now. So all that's left to do now is just check for which values of m and n are either of these brackets equal to 1. Because if neither of these were equal to 1, say you had 17 times 22, then you would have at least three factors. You'd have 1 itself and one of these factors as well. So all we need to do is check, say, when is this bracket equal to 1? Well, actually, if you remember that m and n are positive integers, well, this has to be greater than or equal to 1 plus 3 plus 3, which is equal to 7, which is certainly greater than 1. So actually, this bracket can never be equal to 1 with positive integers, so we don't even care about that. And then if we look at this bracket here, you've got the negative, so perhaps this one can be equal to 1. So let's try and solve this. We write out m squared plus 3n squared minus 3mn, set this equal to 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this basically as a quadratic in the variable m. So if I just rewrite this as m squared, and then it's going to be minus 3n times m, and then plus 3n squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So here you can see this is still it's a nice sort of quadratic in m, but then we've got n's in our coefficients there. In order for this to have solutions, you know that the discriminant has to be greater than or equal to 0. So here, the discriminant is minus 3n all squared minus 4 into 3n squared minus 1. You know that this has to be greater than or equal to 0. So if we expand the brackets here, you get 9n squared minus 12n squared plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. So this is going to be quite restrictive on our values of n. Rearrange here, you get 3n squared has to be less than or equal to 4. So n squared has to be less than or equal to 4 thirds. And remembering that n has to be a positive integer, this means that n has to be equal to 1 in order for this to be prime, essentially, in order for this to be equal to 1. So if we've got n equals 1, let's substitute this into this second nice form here, see what values of m we get. So you've got m squared, and then it's just minus 3m and then plus 3 times 1 minus 1, so plus 2 equals 0. And this has a really nice simple factorization, just m minus 1, m minus 2 equals 0. So therefore m equals 1 and 2. So our pairs then for m and n are just 1 and 1, and then you can also have 2 and 1, which will make this expression prime. So then let's just find out what prime numbers we get out of curiosity. So if you have n equals 1, n equals 1, this gives us 1 to the power of 6 plus 27 times 1 to the power of 6, all divided by 1 squared plus 3 times 1 squared. This gives you 28 over 4, which is equal to 7. So this is indeed a prime number. That's great. It means hopefully we haven't made any mistakes. And then when m is 2 and n is 1, what do we get? We've got 2 to the power of 6 plus 27 times 1 to the power of 6, all divided by 2 squared plus 3 times 1 squared. So this gives you a 64 plus 27 divided by 4 plus 3. So this is 91 divided by 7, which is 13. It's again a prime number. 
So the only possible prime numbers that this could be equal to are 7 and 13, and these happen when m is 1, n is 1, or when m is 2, n is 1, respectively.